Hey, uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Jen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, if you didn't see the con the uh, title, can't speak. Right. So, in case you didn't see the title, um, today I am doing a haul video, um, and it's uh, yeah okay. So um, I really I don't know. Like I'm torn about haul videos. They're fun to make. But it plays into consumerism, and I'm just kind of like, yeah. But I'm doing a haul because I want to say an individual thank you to everyone involved in this video. Um, I had my birthday in January, and this is my birthday haul. Uh, everybody sent me books. Love you. Hang on a minute. Let me, is that, am I doing it right? <laughs> anyway. So I have a bunch of books and I want to show you all the books that my friends gave me. So uh, I'm going to start with these books right here because I have a bunch of books because um, I have a bunch of friends and people that love me and that I love. So I'm going to start with this series right here. This is a trilogy. Um, it's by Joe Abercrombie and it starts with Half a King, uh, Half the World and Half a War. And these were gifted to me by Princess, and she said she has the she has the first one. She hasn't read the series, um, but she's heard that they're really good. So, uh, in true Princess fashion, she has the first one. Um, I'm not sure she's read it yet, but she's heard good things. So I will read them, and then I will tell her whether they're good, and she should read them. Um, so yeah, uh, this book. Let me see. Okay, so. Uh, Prince Yarvi has vowed to, be to reclaim his throne. First, he must survive cruelty, chains, and the bitter waters of the Shattered Sea. And he must do it all with one good hand. Born a weakling in the eyes of the world, Yarvi cannot grip a shield or swing an axe. So he must sharpen his mind to a deadly edge. Gathering a fellowship of the outcast, he finds they can help him more than any noble could. But even with loyal friends at his side, Yarvi's path may well end as it began, in twists and traps and the death of a king. So, it sounds good. Um, I'm always good for disabled rep. Um, I hope it's done well. So, we'll see. Um, next two. I got two here. Ta-da! Uh, these were sent to me by Bonnie. Um, thank you, Bonnie. Um, so, the first one is Sisters of the Vast Black by Lena Rather. Um, years ago, Old Earth sent forth sisters and brothers into the vast dark of the prodigal colonies, armed with only crucifixes and iron faith. Now the sisters of the Order of St. Rita are on an interstellar mission of mercy aboard Our Lady of Impossible Constellations, a living, breathing ship that seems determined to develop a will of its own. When the Order receives a distress call from the newly formed colony, from a newly formed colony, the sisters discover that the bodies and souls in their care, and that of the galactic diaspora, are in danger, and not from the void beyond, but from the nascent central governance and the church itself. So, uh, it's a short one, it's a novella, um, but I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, it sounds great. Um... And then this one is Clockwork Boys by T. Kingfisher. Um, the Clock Tower War, Book One. Uh, a paladin, an assassin, a forger, and a scholar ride out of town. It's not the start of a joke, but rather an espionage mission with deadly serious stakes. Uh, T. Kingfisher's new novel begins the tale of a murderous band of criminals and a scholar. Uh, thrown together in an attempt to unravel the secret of the Clockwork Boys, mechanical soldiers from a neighboring kingdom that promise ruin to the Dowager City. If they succeed, rewards and pardons await, but that requires a long journey through enemy territory directly into the capital. It also requires them to refrain from killing each other along the way. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so um, that sounds interesting. Again, uh, a novella, uh, 200 and... wait... Hang on. Uh, 255 pages, so that won't take long to read. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. So, that'll be fun. Um, next up uh, is another book from Princess. Vampires Melmore. Okay. 
Um, it is on my TBR. It was on my January TBR. Now it's on my February TBR. Um, Princess sent it to me. And, um, yeah, not technically a birthday gift. She just sent it to me. Um, but I'm calling it a birthday gift because it's my birthday month and I do what I want. Um, so Vampires of El Norte, um, if you don't know what it's about, uh, as the daughter of a rancher in 1840s Mexico, Nina knows a thing or two about monsters. Her home has long been threatened by tensions with Anglo settlers from the north. But something more sinister lurks near the ranch at night, something that drains men of their blood and leaves them for dead, something that once attacked Nina nine years ago. Believing Nina dead, Nestor has been on the run from his grief ever since, moving from ranch to ranch working as a vaquero. But no amount of drink can dispel the night terrors of sharp teeth. No woman can erase his childhood sweetheart from his mind. When the U.S. invades Mexico in 1846, the two are brought abruptly together on the road to war. Nina as a curandera, a healer striving to prove her worth to her father so that he does not marry her off to a stranger, and Nestor as a member of the auxiliary cavalry of ranchers and vaqueros. But the shock of their reunion and Nina's rage at Nestor for seemingly abandoning her long ago is quickly overshadowed by the appearance of a nightmare made flesh. And unless Nina and Nestor work through their past and face the future together, neither will survive to see the dawn. So, vampires. Love vampires. So that's that one. Um, next up... This one was sent to me by, uh, oh shit, oh no, there it is, uh, Kiana. Kiana sent me the Ravens, thank you Kiana. Um, this one is by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. And it says here, at first glance, the sisters of ultra-exclusive Kappa Rho Nu, the Ravens, seem like typical sorority girls. Ambitious, beautiful, and smart, they're the most powerful girl, most powerful girls on Westerly College's Savannah, Georgia campus. But the Ravens aren't just regular sorority girls. They're witches. Scarlet Winter has always known she's a witch, and she's determined to be the sorority's president, just like her mother and sister before her. But if a painful... The hell? Um, if a painful secret from her past ever comes to light, she could lose absolutely everything. Vivi Devereaux has no idea she's a witch, and she's never lived in one place long enough to make a friend. So when she gets a coveted bid to pledge the Ravens, she vows to do whatever it takes to be part of the magical sisterhood. The only thing standing in her way is Scarlet, who doesn't think Vivi is Raven's material. But when a wicked power rises on campus, the girls will have to put their rivalry aside to save their fellow sisters. Someone has discovered the Raven's secret, and that someone will do anything to see these witches burn. So that sounds super fun. Um, love that. Um, right. Next up, Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. Uh, I've been wanting to read this one for a while. Um, Paco sent me this one. Yay. Thank you, Paco. Um, this one is, um, it's inspired by, I think, uh, Korean, I think it's Korean mythology. Um, it says here. When Jessamine Teo starts hearing a voice in her head, she chalks it up to stress. Closeted, broke, and jobless, she's moving... Oh, Malaysia. She's moving back to Malaysia with her parents, a country she last saw when she was a toddler. She soon learns the new voice isn't even hers. It's the ghost of her estranged grandmother. In life, Ah Ma was a spirit medium, avatar of a mysterious deity called the Blackwater Sister. Now she's determined to settle a score against a business magnate who has offended the god, and she's decided Jess is going to help her do it, whether Jess wants to or not. Uh, drawn into a world of gods, ghosts, and family secrets, Jess finds that making deals with capricious spirits is a dangerous business, but dealing with her grandmother is just as complicated, especially when Ama tries to spy on her personal life, threatens to spill her secrets to her family, and uses her body to commit felonies. As Jess fights for retribution for Ama, she'll also need to regain control of her body and destiny, or the Blackwater sister may finish her off for good. Dun, dun, dun. Um, so I've been wanting to read that one for a while. It's been on my list for some time. Um, so thank you, Paco. Oh, where did that come from? Um, right. A few more books. Monday's Not Coming. Been wanting to read this for a while. Love Tiffany D. Jackson. Um, let's see. This one came from Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 
Um, all right, Monday Charles is missing, and only Claudia seems to notice. Claudia and Monday have always been inseparable, more sisters than friends. So when Monday doesn't turn up for the first day of school, Claudia starts to worry. When she doesn't show for the second day or the second week, Claudia knows that something is wrong. Monday wouldn't just leave her to endure tests and bullies alone. With her grades on the line, Claudia needs her best and only friend now more than ever. But Monday's mother refuses to give Claudia a straight answer, and Monday's sister April is even less help. As Claudia digs deeper into her friend's disappearance, she discovers that no one seems to remember the last time they saw Monday. How can a teenage girl just vanish without anyone noticing that she's gone? So, uh, my understanding is that this is a book about child trafficking. Um, so, uh, I am told that it's the kind of book you got to be in the right headspace to read. Um, so, yeah, it's got a sticker on the front, which I may peel off. It earned the Coretta Scott King Award for New Talent. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I, like I said, I love Tiffany, G Tiffany D. Jackson. Um, but like I said, I have definitely heard that you got to be in the right headspace to read it. So, um, that. And then, let's see, I have four more books. If I can get this out of the way, I'll get those. Right. You stay over there. So, I have four more books because Christine went a little crazy. Um, Right. Um, these are all, well, three of these are ones that I had on my list, um, because Christine loves to send me ugly hippos. Um, the first one is Clap When You Land. Um, it's by Elizabeth Ov Ov Elizabeth Acevedo, um, which I love her work, have read her before. Um, this book, uh, if you don't already know, uh, Camino Rios lives for the summers when her father visits her in the Dominican Republic. But this year, on the day when his plane is supposed to land, Camino arrives at the airport to see crowds of crying people. In New York City, Yahaira Rios is called to the principal's office where her mother is waiting to tell her that her father, her hero, has died in a plane crash. Separated by distance and Poppy's secrets, the two girls are forced to face a new reality in which their father is dead and their lives are forever altered. And then, when it seems like they've lost everything, they learn of each other. Poppy's death uncovers all the painful truths he kept hidden and the love he divided across an ocean. And now Yahaira and Camino are both left to grapple with what a new sister means to them and what it will take to keep their dreams alive. So, that one... Definitely going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about it. So there you go. Um, next one, The Witch's Daughter. Um, this one's by Paula Braxton. Um, and it has a sequel, Return of the Witch. But uh, the, And there's a sneak peek inside the book. Um, in the spring of 1628, the witch finder of Wessex finds himself a true witch. As Bess Hawksmith watches her mother swing from the hanging tree, she knows that only one man can save her from the same fate, the warlock Gideon Masters. Secluded at his, college, at his cottage, Gideon instructs Bess, awakening formidable powers she didn't know she had. She couldn't have foreseen that even now, centuries later, he would be hunting her across time, determined to claim payment for saving her life. In the present-day England, Elizabeth has built a quiet life. She has spent the centuries in solitude, surviving plagues, wars, and the heartbreak that comes with immortality. Her loneliness comes to an abrupt end when she is befriended by a teenage girl called Tegan. Against her better judgment, Elizabeth opens her heart to Tegan. But will she be able to stand against Gideon, who will stop at nothing to reclaim her soul, in order to protect the girl who has become the daughter she never had? So that sounds wonderful. I think it's going to be great. Um... So that, and then there's two more books. Um, this one's huge. Um, right. So, uh, Witch is Steeped in Gold, which was on my wish list, and its sequel, uh, Empress Crowned in Red, which I did not realize existed. So there you go. Um, giant book. This thing, huge. How big is this? Seven hundred and fifty-two pages. Damn. So, um, 
Empress crowned in red, which is steeped in gold. Uh, Uriah Adair has spent her life in a cell. Heir to an overthrown and magically gifted dynasty, she was exiled from her home on the island nation of Aika. I think I'm saying that right, when just a child, but every day brings her closer to freedom and vengeance. Jasmine Cario grew up dressed in gold with stolen magic at her fingertips. Daughter of the self-crowned Doyen, her existence is a threat to her mother's rule. But unlike her sister before her, Jasmine has no intention of dying to strengthen her mother's power. Sworn enemies, the two witches enter a deadly alliance to take down the woman who threatens both their worlds, Doyen Cario. But revenge is a bloody pursuit and nothing is certain except the links Iraya and Jasmine will go to win this game. So that looks amazing. Um, yeah, that's by Sienna Smart. Um, and like I said, it's got, it's the first book and then the sequel. Um, yeah. So that's going to be fun to read. I'm looking forward to that. So those are my books. One, two, three, four, five, six, 10, 11, 12, 13. I got 13 books for my birthday. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got. That's my haul. Um, I'm really pleased with it. And I thank all of you so much, um, for thinking of me on my birthday. Um, yeah. Oh, wait. That's not all. That's not all. Wait a minute. Where is... Where'd I put it? Just a minute. Because Alicia sent me two books. Where'd I put them? Hang on. There they are. Sorry. Hang on. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Two more books. Um, Alicia sent me Her Body and Other Parties. By Carmen Maria Machado. Um, I think this is a book of short stories. Yes. This is a book of short stories by Carmen Maria Machado. Um, in her electrifying debut, Carmen Maria Machado blithely demolishes the borders between psychological realism and science fiction, comedy and horror, fantasy and fabulism. Here are eight startling stories that map the realities of women's lives and the violence visited upon their bodies. Earthly and otherworldly, antic and sexy, queer and caustic, comic and deadly serious, her body and other parties enlarges the possibilities of contemporary fiction. So that. Looking forward to that one. And then uh, the other one is... Um, Once in Future by uh, Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. And this one is a um, uh, Arthurian uh, retelling. Um, Airy Helix has been running her whole life. A fugitive refugee in the territory controlled by the tyrannical Mercer Corporation, she's always had to hide who she was until now. When Ari crash lands on Old Earth and pulls a magic sword from its ancient resting place, she is revealed to be the 42nd reincarnation of King Arthur. The wizard Merlin has been waiting for centuries for a king who can break the curse that's aged him backward into a teenager. He's trained dozens of Arthurs over the centuries, but never a girl. Could Ari finally be the one? Ari wants nothing to do with Merlin's talk of quest and knights and dragons. She just wants to use her new power to find a way home. But the Mercer Corporation has been hiding a terrible, world-destroying secret, and it will do anything to stop her from uncovering the truth. So, um, okay, so funny story. Uh, like I said, Alicia sent me this. Um, last year for Christmas, Alicia sent me the sequel to this. <laughs> so now I have the first book and the sequel. Um, so now I can read them. Uh, yeah, so got that. Um, so that is one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen books that I got for my birthday. So, yes, I think that's everything. Let me look around. Hang on. No, that was a Christmas book. Uh, that's a fairy loot book. Right, that's my birthday. Okay, so yeah, mm -hmm. that's my birthday. Um, thank you again, all of you, um, for thinking of me upon the day of my birth. Um, I am 46 this year.
Yep. Um, yeah. So, uh, there you go. If you have read one of these books, I would love to hear uh, your thoughts uh, in the comments. No spoilers, just thoughts. Um, especially if they're good thoughts, you know, let me know. Hey, this one's great. Um, I'm going to get to some of these. Uh, I've got, van like I said, I've got Vampires of El Norte on my uh, TBR for February. And I don't know what else. A uh, bunch of stuff on my TBR for February. Uh, probably get to like four or five of them. But I'm going to start Vampires of El Norte. It's going to be one of the first ones that I do because I really want to read it. Um, so yeah, I uh, got a bunch of books. Um, right. So I'm going to go. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. I love you. Um, and thank you for my books. So yeah, there you go. Um, I'm gonna go. Uh, thanks. Excuse me. Thanks again. Um, love you, mean it. And uh, yeah, stay cool. And remember, free Palestine. <laughs>